it's really about not defining yourself anymore based on anything that you perceive anything whether it's blissful states seeings of eternity or whether it's the chaos of the human mind not knowing its place its time its purpose and so forth and this requires courage or faith or devotion or surrender or that gifting that to god like i trust in the ultimate truth i don't need to even feel it right now i trust so much in the ultimate truth i don't need to understand it right now i trust so much in the ultimate truth i don't need to experience it right now that's the birth of true conviction and realization I think it's a bit of both. I mean, it's always a valid practice to deepen your self-realization through whatever angle works for you. But if it's done with an insistence and an avoidance, then yes, it also has the component of that. It's really that simple. So are you doing it with a passion for awakening or are you doing it out of a fear of your state when you're not as well connected to the eternal state because if you are true in your realization to the eternal state the result of that the integration of that would lead into a confidence when you're facing the distractions and the lesser vibrations of the more common perspectives and worlds and interactions so in a way that you can tell that you have deepened or that you're staying true to your realization of eternity is in how stable confident or unaffected you are in the midst of even your own thoughts and it's a, it's the same as the analogies I've used before like once you know santa claus is unreal you're not stressed about any conversation about whether he's real or not you could engage in in hour long dialogues about whether Santa Claus is real or not with people who fully believe he's real with people there who fully believe he's not real it just wouldn't disturb you because you know so you want to get to the true knowledge of it to where it's a conviction right it's what you're expressing basically it's a desire for that not to just be an experience where you know it as long as you experience it you want to know it even when you don't experience it right am i hearing that right no no that's precisely that so then there's two ways to go about this ironically one is to spend more time in that experience of eternity in that clear seeing that hey i'm already dead slash alive it's the same thing and i'm going to exist eternally the more you see that obviously the more convinced you'll become of it so your conviction will get get stronger and then you won't be so disrupted anymore by your thoughts and your feelings of insecurity and unsafety so ironically the way to become more stable in your day-to-day -day interactions is to seek more of the experience that confirms that stable knowing the other way to go about it is and they can both be done actually understanding okay if my desire is to be convinced of this then i can practice this in the midst of my more distracted states i can remember and this is more of a faith practice rather than a doing practice it's less yogic and it's more devotional although devotion is also part of uh, yoga but it's less of a i'm going to penetrate an experience and out of that experience i'm going to extract my confidence and conviction and it's more an act of it's an it's a gift to god it's a gift of trusting 
It's the gift of faith. That in the moment when your mind goes like, dee, 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 that instead of trying to escape the situation and to try to retrieve the experience of eternity, you simply decide there and then to remember your experience of eternity and to simply trust that that's already the case. You don't have to get back to the experience of it in order to find stability. And then through that faithful act, that gift to God of trusting it, of trusting what you already know is true, even if you're not feeling it, then you will also find that your system relaxes in the midst of your more ordinary states of consciousness. And that's really where true stability comes in and where you can be a more efficient servant because now you're no longer creating such a strong distinction between staying in the experience of eternity and any other experience or state. Now you're really having faith that it's the case. This is the path of conviction, right? I've talked about this in a meditation mastery retreat, as you know, probably. And it's that same principle applies here to this particular realization. And there's nothing wrong with spending a decent amount of time meditating and deepening in that experience. But even that experience can become a golden chain. Right? right? Whether the chain is made of rusty iron or it's made of gold, it still binds. It still blinds. It still limits. That's why the path of conviction is so powerful and important in my view, because it can set people free in all circumstances of life and not just in their elevated states of mind, which is a dependency. It's like an addiction or can be an addiction because now you have to constantly manage your life to where you're not too exposed to the elements because otherwise you're going to lose your knowledge, which means it's not true knowledge, which means you're still objectifying what you know is true by sourcing it into projecting that into an experience or a direct seeing of it. But faith can deepen your direct seeing of it. It's not just that your direct seeing of it increases your faith. It's your faith in already knowing it that will also deepen your seeing of it. Does this touch upon your query? No, definitely. I'm more feeling it than listening. <clears throat> Even though, of course, I'm listening to your words. But I, I, I can see clearly now that actually, in a way, I'm addicted to that, the direct seeing of, the, of that state. Yeah, but do you know and why? Do you know why? It actually it doesn't feel that I'm running away. From something, it does feel like an actual seeking and something that I, it's like my duty to stay with and develop some sort of a conviction. But also, uh, I know that this conviction should not be developed, it has to be just uh, chosen. Uh, um, so, in that way, what you said helps a lot. Like, uh, yeah, but also see that. Part of your desire or the, the element of it that can feel like an addiction or like a stressful seeking is born out of wherever you're still identified with the, say, crazy mind or the loose cannon mind or the monkey mind. So when you're feeling the chaos of the mind or the turbulence in the body and the mind, if you are self-defining yourself in that moment, as if you're caught in that, or as if that means something about you, if you're self-defining yourself because of the disturbance, you're still identified with it. And then inevitably you're going to be seeking an experience that relieves you of that, which is the cause right. of all addiction, all addictive behavior. So, so can you see that when the disturbance hits you, hard or when you feel very chaotic in that moment, you're giving it meaning of self that self is contained in it or that it belongs to you or that it has anything to do with you or that it says something about you or that that means you're not there yet. Or that it means that you're, that you're a fraud maybe, or that you're unworthy or whatever. 
or that you're unstable. So if you're self-defining yourself because of what you're witnessing, in this case, turbulence, then that is a misidentification of self with stuff. And that will inevitably lead to trying to seek the self in a higher experience to try to relieve yourself of that false identification. But it's not the chaotic experience that's troubling you at the core of it. It's the identification with it. This is why I say, yes, you can swap out your rusty iron chains for golden chains. And you can architect your life in such a way that 80% of your waking hours are spent meditating and reading scripture and like avoiding people. And But that's just as addicted as when you're identified with the disturbance. So it's really about not defining yourself anymore based on anything that you perceive, anything, whether it's blissful states, seeings of eternity, or whether it's the chaos of the human mind, not knowing its place, its time, its purpose, and so forth. Right. And this requires courage or faith or devotion or surrender or that gifting that to God. Like I trust in the ultimate truth. I don't need to even feel it right now. I trust so much in the ultimate truth. I don't need to understand it right now. I trust so much in the ultimate truth. I don't need to experience it right now. That's the birth of true conviction and realization. And the consequent result is great stability in body, mind, and spirit. Great balance. That will be the consequence of it. But it's because of the disidentification or the simply, not even disidentification, it's just, just don't identify with anything that you're witnessing in a moment of chaos. And then when that cloud passes, and now you're seeing beautiful insights into the eternal nature as it already is, also don't identify yourself with that. 